All right, so before I forget, there is an announcement that um, Carrie has passed on to me, um, and that is to tell you that Miranda is doing a show on Thursday evening, 7th, at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, and she's doing a butterfly cage. That sounds awesome. I love butterflies. So that's definitely one not to miss. And what we are doing today is a watercolour with the um, watercolour confections and the Prima watercolour paper and brushes. So I'm not sure whether all this is going to fit into an hour, so I've done a little bit of preparation just in case um, so I can get to work on the background. If we run out of time, then we'll, we'll go to the plan B. So we'll take a look at that. So the paper that I'm using tonight is the 8 by 8 watercolour pad and I'm looking for an, an item number there we go so this is item number 847739 and you get 20 sheets in here and I have sketched my um, design in advance just to save us some time but I just wanted to point out now I've actually because I traced mine I've pulled this page up but if you've not seen these pads before the gums on both sides which is really nice because if you've used watercolour at all you know that the paper will warp when you're using it and it can be quite frustrating when you're trying to paint and obviously it's, the water's going to run and the colour's going to run to places that you don't want it to so having it gummed on both sides is is really nice um, but I did lift mine um, just so that I could trace this design for tonight so I've started just with a pencil outline um, for this project and did speak to Carrie originally I was going to do something a little bit more complicated than this and then realized I was not going to fit it into an hour um, and originally when I had that design in mind I said to Carrie that I would upload the template so if anybody wanted it for this one I'm still happy to do that and put it on Prima's Facebook site or on Google Drive or somewhere that everyone can access it so um, that's just if anybody wanted it but it's um, it's just a basic kind of um, flower sketch it's nothing fancy right I'm also using let me go through everything now and then I don't forget I'm using two of the water brushes so they've got different thickness nibs and these are I have another packet here oh focus Let me find something to focus the camera with. We're going to have a little bit of um, unfocused time because of all the white. There we go. All right, we'll just keep that there for now until we get some colour on it. So this is the two brush pen set. And the item number on this is 580421. So that's is what I have here and hopefully there's enough water in them <laughs> we'll see but I did bring some spare water just in case um, and then the watercolour confections I'm using all three sets um because I'm greedy like that <laughs> you can probably do this without all three sets but I did also um the colours oh, I'm sorry I've got I've tried to block out the sun but having a, a bit of an issue there um yeah i did um little samples of the colors so i'll try and remember to hold some of those up because we're not going to see everything on screen i don't think so this is the classic set and as you can see i've made quite a mess in those already and the tropical set which this might be my favorite because of all the bright colors in it okay so that is those and the last set is the decadent pies and again there are the colours and some of these have a little amount of shimmer in them um, I'm not sure you can see if you look at number 28 you can just about pick up some very subtle shimmer which is quite nice okay right let's just check that um, I hope, I'm just hoping that the um, camera is close enough for you to see. I'm just going to see if I can 
what I don't want to do is put it out of focus, which can happen quite easily until there's some colour on the page. All right. I have this bad habit when I'm working with water brushes of testing how much water is coming out on my hands. <laughs> so by the end of it, my hand will be all kinds of colours, I'm sure. All right, to begin with, now I did write down some colours that I used. Um, I tried to write them all down, but I'll be honest and say um, I had to guess at some of them because I couldn't quite remember. But the first um, colours, I've lost my chart, hang on a sec. Okay, the first colours were number 15, so this is from the tropical set, number 15 and number 23 which is also from this set, so the two blues, one is the 23 is a, um, a shade darker. And I'm going to begin by just applying some water to the page and making it not soaking wet, just damp. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze it a little bit out. And these water brushes, by the way, I have to say, are absolutely awesome. These are, I've got so many different water brushes that I've bought, and they've been awful. And I was so ple pleasantly surprised with these. Um, so I'd, if you're looking for a good water brush, I would highly recommend these. Okay, so. I think you can see with the change of colour that that is slightly um, damp, but it's not soaking wet. I'm going to pick up some of the um, 15. Okay, and what I tend to do is pick up some of the paint and then just make a little bit of a puddle up with it so it's not too um, strong. And also you can use some scrap. This isn't really scrap because it's the back of the project. But you can just test how strong that colour is and then pick up some more if you need it. So I'm going to drop some colour in at the top of the petal and just let that float down. I'm going to do the same on this one. Okay, and then just leave that to blend in, which it will come down because the rest of it is damp. And then just going to clean that brush a bit. I don't know. I don't know why I do it on my hands. It's a, it's a bad habit I've got into when using water brushes. Right, so I'm going to turn this around now and just again apply some water to the next couple of petals. And the reason I'm just doing a couple at a time is um, if you try and do them all with this particular paper, I found that it, it does dry too much. So that is. Um, an advantage and a disadvantage, it's going to be a definite advantage tonight because um, we won't have to wait too long for things to dry, hopefully. Okay. And the thing with watercolour is it's only going to bleed where you've put the water, so you don't need to worry about it, you know, bleeding outside of the lines. So I'm just going to pull some of that down on that side. And again, on this one. So I'm working quite lightly to start off with, and then you'll see by the end, um, once it's been built up in layers, then we, you know, it'll be um, quite a bit darker. But if you're unsure about colour, which um, I'm not an expert at watercolour, so I do tend to hesitate a little bit in putting too much colour down to begin with. It's quite nice to work in layers. And then get this last one done. Okay. Trying to work quickly but not um, <laughs> not mess it up. There's a fine line. Okay, that should be fine. So I'm going to show you that so far. You can see the petals that were done first are a lot lighter, and that's because it's starting to dry. 
So um, that's something to be aware of. You can put colour down and think it's way too strong, but then it does dry a lot lighter. What ink is the best to use to stamp with when we are using these watercolours? Um, it depends what effect you want to have, Eileen. The stamping on this one, when we get to it, I've used Distress Ink because I still wanted it to be water soluble so I could fade it out. But if you wanted something permanent, then use Archival. Or if you're wanting to stamp an image to watercolour, Archival every time for watercolour paper. If you didn't want it to move, that is. If you do want it to move, Distress Ink. So it, ju it just depends on what you want to do. Um, okay, so the next thing... I'm just seeing if it's dry enough. I'm going to put some colour on the centre. Um, it may bleed out a little bit because it's still damp, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. So... I'm basically going to go over everything some water I'm not being especially neat because I know the paper is still damp really but that's okay because we're going to put lots of colours on here anyway and around the edges there'll be a lot of shadow so if it bleeds out we'll be going over it with shadow colours right now I'm going to pick up number four. So this is from the. I'm just checking it as number four. No, it's not. It's twenty. It's not. It's twenty-one from the tropicals to begin with. So this is like a kind of a cad yellow. And it's a little more orange toned than that. I'm going to pick up some of that. Um, that's kind of quite strong. I'm just going to add <coughs> some water into that until it's gone. Uh, okay. Right. So I'm just going to lightly. And this is not going to look great right now. I'm not doing any shading or anything. I'm just going over the whole centre part. And just adding some colour to it. Okay, it's not bled out too much though. So that's good. Okay, so that's just colouring everything to begin with as a base coat. Um, they're still a touch damp, but I think they're okay. It's so going to add some darker shadow on here. So now I'm going to go to the 23. Okay, this is actually the second darkest blue that we'll be using tonight. So we're slowly building up. So 23, I'm running out of space to put colours already. If I cleaned the palette, that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? I'm just going to clean some of the colour off the palette because I tend to put it everywhere. Okay, that should be good. This is pretty strong. Now this time I'm going to use both brushes and I'll show you how I'm going to do the shading. So I've got the colour, it's quite, quite a strong colour and I'm going to drop it in in places where I want to start darkening it and then I'm going to soften it with the other brush that's clean. So I'm going to look at the original so there's dark shading down this side, along here, over there, and it's these types of dark areas that we're just starting to map in at the ends. 
Okay. So I'm going to do this top part first. And this might bleed because it is damp. I'm just going to drag some up and some across. And I'm going to take the other brush and just with a circular motion, just blend it out so it softens the edge. It is bleeding slightly because it's still wet. Hopefully you can see that, how it just softens it out. I'm trying to look for areas that are actually dry. Okay, I think down here is a little drier, so. And this would be quite heavily shadowed. So we can do a fair bit more. I should really have left this a little bit longer than what I have. I'll show you this in a minute. bother me that it's bled but I don't think there's a whole lot I can do about it right now. It won't really matter in the end. Okay, I'm also going to just start mapping in some of these lines on the petals at the same time. same thing and I'm just going to put the water brush straight over these just to soften them okay. so there it is so far still an awful lot of shading to do yet Areas a little drier now. And the tips. Right. It's kind of, um, it's quite repetitive really, building up the layers, but it's also quite therapeutic I find. I could spend a lot longer than an hour building the colour here, so it's um, probably not going to get as dark as the original project that I did, because I don't think we'll have time for that. But it'll just be a different look. Alright, 
so the centers can dry. So I'll just put I'm gonna stop doing that on my hand. Uh, right, so I'm not sure if it's dry enough, but we'll we'll have a go with it. Okay, so now we're going on to number four. So this is the classic set. So this is like a cad cadmium orange kind of colour. And to begin with, oh, that's basic on this palette. To begin with, I'm going to use it on its own. It is quite a strong colour, so. Let's see. And I think we'll probably, we'll probably do that centre part first. I'm just kind of dabbing it on. I'm just kind of sh starting to show where the the shape is going to be, and then take it to the outside as well. And again, this may bleed because I'm kind of supposed to let it dry before we move on, but I'm kind of just going to soften that out a little bit. Yeah, it is bleeding a little. That's okay. looks quite strong at the minute but it's it's going to be much darker than this um, when we finish right and then I'm going to go back to number four no number 21 which was the the more yellowy color and I can just add some of this over there Alright, so at the minute it's kind of looking a bit like a blobby mess, but it's starting to build up some layers. So if you look at the original, the centre is very, very dark, and so is the outside part there. And then this part is lighter. Right, I think while that's drying, we'll We'll go and do something with the stem and get some colour on there. And then go back again. So I'm just going to dampen that. And I chose number 16, which is in the tropical set. Thanks, Eileen. And I mix this with some 36, which is in the Decadent Pies set. Okay, so I'm going to lay some 16 on first. Just 
so I'm just going to mix some of that in the palette. And I'm going to run it down the right hand edge. And it's actually doing a good job of bleeding across anyway. And then I'm going to pick up a little of the 36. And we'll just run that down as well. Okay. So I'm just going to leave that as it is for now but it makes a really nice green colour if you just drop some of that blue into it it's like a um, manganese blue about 36 right let's see what we can do okay we can start to put some darker colour on I think It's still kind of. I don't really want to take a heat gun to it because I think it's going to warp the paper. But we'll see how we go. Okay, I think we should be okay to put some deeper shadows on. So, still on the decadent pies, I'm going to go to 35 now, which is really deep. And this one, I would say this is like a, a Payne's Grey type colour. It's a really nice colour to work with. And it is it's really, really deep. But you get that nice contrast when you use it. So I'm just going to drop some in. Where the deepest shadows would be. and then just soften it out again Okay, so you can see hopefully the contrast there straight away. And then there'll be in this area, which has already bled twice now, but we'll we'll take our chances and see if we can drop some shadow into it. not too bad okay this side is uh, definitely dry so I'm going to go a bit deeper actually My um, laptop keeps going into sleep mode, so if I miss the chat, it's because I can't see anything. Alright, over here, let's make this a tick darker. And this petal's underneath, so corners will be in shadow ok 
Okay. So it's starting to starting to have a little bit more depth now. It still looks <laughs> still looks a hot mess in the centre, but we'll work on that. It's um it is a process watercolour and you've got to uh, be a little bit patient with it. Especially where the drying is concerned because um, clearly I'm not waiting for things to dry, you know. Add a bit of that depth on the lines as well. And this over here would be quite dark. Okay. okay, so there's a little bit outside the lines there, so that's why I was trying to press it, but we can live with it, we can, uh, the problem is if you try and take it off while it's wet, it'll just bleed more. <laughs> so I'm just trying to dilute the very edge, but That's okay, we can put some background on there anyway, it's because I'm trying to rush it a little. Uh, let's see, it still needs to be a whole lot darker, but I could definitely come and touch that bit, it's way too wet. I think we can drop some more over here. So, as I say, we probably won't get the same kind of depth, but you can see how it's been built up in layers, at least. And if you waited for it to dry, in between the layers, then uh, you're going to get that depth much more quickly, without it bleeding everywhere as well. this bit down here and then I think we'll move on and we should be able to look at the centre again. You do have to work quite quickly um, to blend and soften the edges with um, these particular paints and paper so that's something to be aware of. I keep wanting to do this bit but it's I'm probably doing this bit here. There's no point doing that bit over there because it's just going to keep bleeding. So it's just a kind of back and forth playing with the colour. And I'm going to add additional colour onto these as well, not just the um, the blues, um, so that we warm it up a bit. Right, let's get 
whilst we can, let's get some background onto it. So, I'm just going to take the brush and I'm squeezing quite hard with the water. This is just to kind of get some colour on. It might make the paper warp a little bit actually because I um, picked it up from that gummed edge, but we'll see. Okay, so on the background around the edges, there's two colours and they're the same two colours that were in the stem. So that would be number 16 from the Tropicals and number 36 from the Decadent Pies. Okay, those two. So I'm going to drop some of the green in to begin with. So bring, bring this down with no particular um, way to do this, you know, I'm just haphazardly dropping it in where I think it's. Um, need some colour. I'm, I am keeping it towards the edges though. So this is where it it begins to look a little more like a, a mixed media piece when you start messing with the background and things as well. And then when we add that stamping towards the end. Okay, so that's the first colour drops on. That is quite strong at the minute but it's going to dry and lighten that and it's actually going to change colour now anyway because I'm going to add that 36 which is the one that's um, like a manganese blue and this will totally change it so I'm going to start dropping some not completely covering all of the um, the green colour which actually looks quite yellowy um, when you dilute it down. Okay, and then if we really wanted to, we could go ahead and soften those edges while the paper's still wet. But it would probably self-soften because of how I laid the water down. take it too close to the petals otherwise we won't be able to work on them now I'm just going to do something about the light there we go I think that's a bit better I had to block the sun out earlier so um, hopefully that's a little better light wise. Alright, I think the centre is okay to work on. Now let me check the notes I made which aren't very good for the centre. So well so far we've used the the one that's like a card yellow which is number 21 and then we went over it with the orange now to darken it up um, I want to mix some of the cad orange so that number four and I mix it with some of that brown the number 10 and that's going to darken that orange colour so we can start to get this real dark rusty coloured edge on there and in the very centre as well so let's take some of the number four. And it's real strong that number four, so uh, I mean I used it quite dilute there. You don't need a lot of it. Um it's number ten. So I'm just I know you can't see what I'm doing because they're off camera, but I've literally just taken some number four and we've mixed it with some of the number ten 
and then I'm also going to add just a drop of one of the blues, I think we'll do 23. Let's add a bit more orange into there. You kind of got to play around until you're happy with what you've got. So that's that's really strong, but you could do with a just a bit more orange, I think. That's getting there. It's going to be um, very strong to lay down, but it is very strong at the edges. Okay. So it is dry enough to work with now. So I'm just going to kind of spot this on. I'm sort of using a, a dabbing motion so that it's it's going to build up in layers and create that kind of ruffled effect. Okay, and then I'm just going to use the the brush just to soften it a little. We're doing for time. Time flies by so fast. Okay, so you can see how it's been dabbed, so that's just the first of the dark layers. But dabbing it sort of an up and down motion like that is is going to create that ruffled effect because you can see some of the colour underneath from the previous layer. Now into that while it's still wet, I'm going to go and add some red. And for the red, what did I use for the red? I think it was number three, yeah, number three. Which is, this red is a lot stronger than that. It's, it's quite washed out there on the sample I did. So I'm just going to take some of that. You can see how strong it is there. It's not washed out at all. Right, I'm just going to drop this in a few places. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to that mix. And add some again over the top. And that's gonna it's gonna bleed down a little bit. And I'm gonna leave that layer alone for now. And go to the centre. Now the centre, the very centre, is very, very dark, and then there's a place where there's the suggestion of stamens, and then there's that kind of rusty colour again the dark orange and it's kind of this is the bit where I'm thinking when well we are running out of time it's um, quarter to now but I think if I just show you um, I'll see if I can show you how to put the very dark colour in but I'm not sure it's all going to dry in time so we're going back to the the little rusty mix that I made with the number four and the number ten and the little bit of blue in it and that needs to come over this layer and this is pretty strong and I'm just going to try and leave a place where those stamens would be okay and then I'm just going to soften it a little and this is the stage where you <laughs> you kind of look and think that's a real hot mess but it all works out I 
Okay. Now, the problem is that I can't really touch that now for a good while. Um, all that layer. So, maybe I'll, I'll leave this bit and move on to my plan B because we're running out of time. But, let me show you because it does look a hot mess and it works out fine. <laughs> and you kind of, if you've not worked with watercolour before, you kind of think, oh, you know. <laughs> but, this red, which is quite, I don't know if it's shown in camera, but it's quite loud at the minute because it's wet, it will recede back into the paper and it will um, be a lot softer when it dries. But I would put another layer of the brown and red and brown and red until I'm happy with it. And then the very centre I used, and I might be able to come back to this one, but I have got another one. But the very centre, um, let me see what I used. I think I used the same kind of rusty combination, but added a lot more blue to it. So it was really, really dark. And that was, that was about it. So if I took some of that, I can't put it on there now. Well, I could put a bit, it'll bleed everywhere. But that's the, the rusty combination that I've been using. So if I took some of that, put it there, and then I took some of the 35 blue. And you see, do you see how dark that is? And then a bit more of the rust. Because I don't want it to be blue, obviously. But it goes, it does go really dark. And then you can drop that into the centre, which is uh, going to bleed everywhere if I do it now. But we'll, we'll have a go. And it is something you'd have to do several times anyway to get the real depth of colour and to get it where you want it. But can you see how once you start dropping the dark colour in as well, it starts to look, you know, like the, like it is a centre, that it's further back. So I might need to leave this one for now um, and move on to the other one. But I do want to just show you the rest on the petals because I did some other colours to these. So the first other colour that I added was some 36, so the, the manganese blue type one. So we'll add some of that. I might need to put my light on in a minute because it's getting. Let me just put the light on because it's getting. It's getting kind of dark here. Is that better? I hope so. I hope I don't get a lot of shadow. It's a, a strange time for us at the minute because it's when I start streaming, it's light, and then it's just um, going dark. So thirty six then. Okay. I'm just um, mixing a little of this in the palette and just diluting it a little because these are pretty strong colours. And then I'm actually going to apply it really liberally. Okay, so that is going to have to be fast. <laughs> that is quite um, a liberal coat of it. And then pick up the other brush and soften it. And then I did this in quite a few places and it just adds almost a warmth to it. It's a really nice colour. So the other blues are colder blues. And this one's really warm. So I can finish off this bit and then we'll, we'll go to plan B. My computer's going to sleep again. Hang on, because like every time I put my computer screen back on, the um, chat disappears because it's in a separate window. Me, colour where I didn't want it there. That's okay. So that just went a little further over because I dropped some colour on where I didn't especially want it, but. You can just dab it off again. And it doesn't happen if you're not trying to rush. Well, it doesn't happen as often. I wouldn't say it doesn't happen. Okay. Right, so let me just show you. I've done...
some of that on all the petals apart from this one and this one now looks a lot colder okay so i'm going to finish that one and drop some color into and just more or less doing it on one side of the the petal kind of using the shadowing as a guide but not exclusively you know it's not it's not especially realistic right and then the next color that i dropped in was some violet and i used number 20 from the confection set for this violet color here so i'm going to do that as well and then i tended to drop the violet in opposite places to where i dropped the um number 36 the manganese blue tent color so we'll pick up some of that and i'm just diluting it on the palette a little okay and we'll see and start over here and i'm dropping it quite heavy but bearing in mind, you know, it's going to dry a lot lighter. That might have been too heavy then. And a little over here. Okay, so every time I'm just softening it again like I've done throughout. I've done some of those but not all of them I just <laughs> ignore when we're glad over that <laughs> that's a time thing but can you see the difference that makes to those petals where we've just got that violet tinge and the the warmer blue against this one and this one that haven't been done well they've been done with blue but not the lilac or violet color okay Right, I'm going to leave this one now and go into plan B because I kind of knew we wouldn't get completely finished and we've only got five minutes. So, the only thing I will say is if you wanted to do this, you really need to leave it to dry so that it doesn't bleed out like this one has. And you really need to keep, like I would put maybe another four layers of colour on this to get it to that kind of strength okay maybe not so much the the outer petals they would be more or less done um but i'd put a lot more shading because look on this one if you see how dark that shading is under here you know that's as dark as you can get the color at the the bottom there and then you know over here so the shading would be a lot darker the center obviously with not it's still damp now I've not been able to do the center properly but you would just build those layers so i've done the i've shown you how to do it and i've shown you the colors and you just need to keep building those layers until you're happy with it um now here's one i've only done one more step on this one this again is not built as much um because uh this was my panic piece earlier today when I thought, hmm, maybe I'm not going to do this in an hour after all. So I did, I'm more or less at the same stage, but, I, you know, the centre is darker, the, the shadow is darker. Okay, but even, you know, I would go darker again on this. So there's side by side. Okay. Um, now, the only thing I have done, which I haven't done on this one, I guess I... I could do that before we swap pieces is just put some splatters on so i used uh what color did i use i think i used 23 not that it particularly matters you could do different colored splatters so to put the splatters on get the brush pretty soaking okay so i've got as much paint and water as that brush will hold on it and then just tap it 
if you hold it fairly close to the page you're going to get the splatters more where you want them okay so i kind of like some to go onto the flower but not cover it so i tend to put a few on one edge and then just kind of look where you want them and that will be it okay so that is the stage where this is at all right so it's a good job i did this <laughs> All right, then the last bit then is the making it into more of a mixed media piece. So for this, I used this huge stamp. And if you know me, you know that I put text background stamps on everything. I, I can't help myself. <laughs> it's my uh, stamping addiction. Um, if you knew just how many text stamps I had, <laughs> They are all different though. So this particular one is item number 814656. And this is a gorgeous one because it's it's tiny text. Okay. And these, these are really hard to find with tiny text. And it's got straight text and it's got the italic text on it as well. So it's a nice combination. You can use it any way around because the writing's all different ways around ways around. And I'm going to use two Distress Inks. Now I picked these to try and coordinate with the colours that are already on the painting. So I've got Salty Ocean and Cracked Pistachio. And I'm just going to check my chat again. Hang on. Hang on a sec, because my chat has disappeared. Just waiting a sec, just to make sure I'm still here, because my chat um, has gone. Um... Yeah, I've got no chat whatsoever, so if Carrie could just send me a little Facebook message and just to let me know if we are still good to go, because I've got no chat now. So I will, uh, I'll wait on that. I'll just try and refresh it quickly, but we are nearly at the end anyway, so that's not too bad. Oh god, right, thanks Carrie. Okay, so I, <laughs> I can't see anything now in chat. Not that I... Oh, it's, it's back, it's back. Okay, it's back for now. Right, if it goes again now, just carry on. We're nearly done. Oh, it happens. All right. So I used a mixture of these inks. And I did mostly have this part of the text. But it, you know, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm just going to randomly take both of those. I'm just going to do a little test to see. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'll do that again. And now this is very random, and we're not thinking it, thinking about it at all. If you want it to look like a I should say, if you want it to look like a mixed media piece I've done, because I do this all the time, I tend to take the background onto the object and then it looks more integrated and part of the same rather than two separate things. Okay, but obviously, you know, if you want to do this, it's your piece, you do it however you want. And I know... Um, I know a lot of people, they get to this stage and they're too scared to add anything else because if they've spent so long painting something, you know, they're afraid of messing it up. What stamp is this? Shall I read that out again? It is, it's this huge cling mounted stamp, grey rubber, and the item number is there, it's 814656. 
Okay. Right, so now I'm going back to the water brush and I'm just dragging the water brush over where I've just stamped. Okay. And what that is going to do is fade that text so it has that more watercolour appearance. So let me show you that. So this part is without the water brush and here's where I've just started to add the water brush and smear it out. So you can drag that in quite far. Okay, let me just get some more like that. Oh, focus. Sorry. I'm trying to show you a bit closer up and I just lose the focus straight away. But do you see how that just bleeds out? But you can still have the text effect. Okay. So that is literally the easiest kind of background you can do. That's it. We're done. Okay. And then you just let it dry. And then it kind of, when you first do it, it looks a little bit patchy because. But run your water brush further out than the text and then it will soften itself naturally and it won't dry, you know, in those chunks like that. So that's the how it looks when it's dried. Whew. Two minutes over time. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's all in the planning, you know. <laughs> so I hope I hope you enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed preparing for this. If you knew how many daffodils I painted. I know these paints and this paper inside out now and I think that's part of the process you know because when I first got the paint the paints were great they're so pigmented but that took a little bit of getting used to for me um, and I think it's the same with any product and the paper too it take, you know it takes a little bit of getting used to so I used the paper first with the paints that I was familiar with and then I used the um, Prima paint with the Prima paper, so I got to know, you know, how both of them worked. But that's it. So I'm going to stop the recording there, and hopefully you enjoyed it. So let me just stop that.